Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a simple market profile in about uh, 30 lines of Python code. So this is not gonna have all the bells and whistles you'll see in commercial packages out there, but it will give you a good idea of where the market has been and the current profile of the market in whatever time frame you choose. So what is a, a market profile? It was developed in the late 50s by J.P. Stadelmeyer, who was a, um, a pit trader, and he devised this kind of statistical approach to, uh, to keep track of price action. So instead of uh, using like a normal chart where you have on the vertical axis your price and on the horizontal axis your, the time, he used the vertical axis for price, but instead for time he used a lettering system. So an incremental lettering system to capture time. And the best way for me to, to show, to, to describe it, is to actually show you the end product uh, of this uh, video. And it's very simple. Uh, it's, uh, we call it, so Python, I called it mkp, marketprofile.py, you can call it whatever you want. And we're going to look at the, um, the gold um, ETFs. And uh, we're using Yahoo for the back end to pull the data. So it's got to be a symbol that works on the Yahoo charting uh, website. So here it is, right? We see uh, one year's worth of um, a gold ETF. And um, in this case, we are using monthly profile, so each one is a month, right? And daily lettering system. So, uh, you know, there's about 20 letters per, um, uh, per month. And so the market opened at A, right here, right, at this price. So that was the first day of the month of April. Then it went to B, then it went up at C, then back down, D, you see? And it did, you know, a lot of price movement uh, on the fourth day, right? Where, as you can see with E, sorry, the, the fifth day, as you can see with E, right? So, as you can see, um, you would use the vertical axis for price and the letters, all the letters would try to be as close as possible to your vertical axis. If there's already a price letter there, you have to put it uh, next to it. So if A was here and B is at the same price, it's not going to be touching the vertical axis anymore. It's going to be one letter deep, right? And eventually you start getting this kind of normal distribution looking uh, chart. And that's what I think is very interesting because it's, you know, very, it's, just, it's a showing a very statistically sound way of displaying uh, the price action. So these are looking at, this is daily uh, letters uh, with monthly profiles, but let's take a step back and think about how it was for uh, J.P. Stettelmeyer back in the late 50s. He was a pit trader, so he was probably, um, you know, charting one minute or five minute um, uh, letters. And imagine that this was, you know, uh, I don't know, a few hours in the trading day, and he was looking at this distribution right here. Um, we know he knows that you know the consensus price, right? The mean price where the, the 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 price is trading the most is right around the 118 level. So if the price is currently on the letter E, and he you know he could look around at the pit and he would see that nobody is acting crazy, there's no big sellers coming in, he would simply put a buy order and then get out here, right? Back kind of a mean reversion system. Same thing the other way around. If the market is trading here and he doesn't see any you know. Uh, a late buying action going in, he would put a sell order and get out here. Of course, if there were news items or if people were, were behaving differently, uh, you know, more agitated, he would, you know, not not get into the market. So the story, uh, and I read this a long time ago, and I don't remember what book it was in, but uh, that people eventually s uh, stopped trading with him because he was so good at reading the price action, they were basically just giving him money. And that's kind of a testament to, to a good way, a good, uh, a good way of understanding the markets. Um, unfortunately today, uh, we don't have access to the pits and the pits, you know, are not what they used to be. You know, most of them are gone and a few of them that, that are still here, they don't control the majority of the market anymore. So, uh, this really is an alternative to charting, right? It shouldn't be seen as a trading system. Uh, it's just instead of looking at candlesticks or line charts, you look at market profiles. It's just another way of kind of getting a better grasp over the market. Uh, in the next video, I may do a kind of an excitement indicator to see, you know, any unusual moves or speed changes. And that could be also an interesting uh, complementary indicator for this, uh, for this tool. Okay, so um, let's uh, dive into the code. And the code is, as I said, it was very simple. Here it is. Everything is on the blog, so you don't have you don't have to copy it from the screen if you don't want to. The main function is, uh, you know, simply pulling the arguments that you know you pass to um, 
uh, you know, to your, as you call your script, you know, the, the symbol you want, the date range, and the, the precision, the height precision. But the, the heart of the matter happens here. So let me, um, uh, let's get into, let's clear this, get it into IPython. And I'm simply gonna uh, show you how the code works by copying the lines into it. So I'm loading a bunch of libraries here. And we need to initialize a few variables. So let's start with our symbol. I'm gonna go with uh, GLD. frequency, uh, the height precision. So the height precision currently forces everything, removes everything after the decimal point. So we're, we're looking at dollar charts. If you need it to be uh, $5 charts, you need to change the precision. If you want it to be 50 cents, you need to change it. And I'll show you how that works. It's very straightforward. Frequency, we are using monthly M, but you can change that for daily or you know even hourly. And we're gonna initialize our start and end date. So the date, this is this date code is fairly straightforward, so I won't talk about it much. Let me just run it. You know, in a nutshell, we are starting the date a year from now, so doing a time delta, and changing the day of the month to the first of the month, and the end date is today, right? Your current date. This is more interesting here. So here we're using the Pandas data reader library to pull data from Yahoo. This is a pretty cool library because it allows you to, um, uh, to pull data from the other sources, Google and other financial sources. So in this case, we're gonna pull our gold, um, let me clear this. We're gonna pull our gold futures, sorry, not futures, our gold ETFs from uh, Yahoo. And let me, let's, let's take a peek at what it looks like. So it's very straightforward, right? It shows you the open, high, low, close volume and adjusted close as well, and your date range, right? So it starts, uh, you know, uh, April 1st, all the way to, you know, the day of the video. Okay. Uh, we are only using the high and the low of the price. We don't care about the closing, right? We want to get the range so we can put our letters, right? If it went, if it did $3, we're gonna have three A's, right? Three letters. And this allows us to, um, So we are only going to be applying. Uh, so we're only applying our rounding system, our scaling system, to the high and the low. We don't care about the close. Here we're saying basically, um, you know, multiple. We're going to multiply it, and then truncate everything past the decimal point. So in this case, we're multiplying it by one, right? And then we're rounding it. So we're removing all the the cents information, just keeping the dollar. Um, and this, then we're using a, the time grouper, uh, which allows us to pass a frequency and get uh, the date, the, the, the range dates. We, I want to get an idea of how many months uh, I'm going to need to display in my profile. So that's why I'm using, it's a quick way to And here it is, it shows me that we have these months to show, right? And it's just a way for me to pull those months so I know what to display. I know I'm gonna have, you know, how many profiles we're gonna have on the chart. Then everything is gonna be held in a default dictionary. So let me just initialize that. And we're gonna use the, the ASCII character value, right? Like that we can easily increment A, B, C, D, okay? So I'm setting it to 64 in this case. And then, we initialize um, our uh, dictionary to hold the whole range of values that we're gonna need to display because we already know, you know, the, the, the maximum dollar and the minimum dollar for this chart. And if we look at MP, the market profile, here it is, right? We know it's gonna go from 107 all the way to 130. Actually, it goes to 131 because it's not showing the last price and we simply add it at the end. So let me just do that right now. And if we do MP, now it goes from 107 to 131, and I'm appending the date. You'll, you'll see how that works. That's a little trick I'm doing uh, to simplify uh, the charting needs. Then here, we don't need to go into too many details, but we're simply looping through each date of, um, of the market data. 
And every time we're getting the minimum price for that date, the maximum price, the high, right? And we're adding that to our uh, dictionary. Every time, you know, the current date is outside of this, um, of our, um, uh, of our time groups, right? Our time groups tell us this is one month, this is another month, this is another month. So every time we're adding information, and now we're not in the same month as uh, uh, we've changed months in our list of um, of times, month times. It knows that it needs to dump all that information into a profile, profile, and start working on the next profile. So if I run all this. And I'll go MP. You now have the entire profile. Just keep in mind that it's flipped, right? Because we show we show the highest value at top and the lowest value at the bottom. So this is the kind of the gold chart I was showing earlier, but reversed. And this is how it's simply stored in the default dictionary. All we gotta do then is clean it up to present it. It's that simple. And um, I think we can run this to show you the cleaned version. And there it is, right? What I was showing you earlier, the price action of gold uh, using you know daily letters and monthly profiles. So uh, let me just show you one or two more things here. Let's get out of here. I think I've talked enough about the code. Let me just show you how, uh, how it works for a, a, a different type of stock. So let's see, Python, mkp.py, I'm calling um, the stock. Let's show, um, uh, let's show, let's show Microsoft. Okay. So Microsoft at a dollar scale, it's hard to read, right? Actually, that's hard to read because it's too small. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and it's going to be, uh, here, let me run it. So you're going to miss part of it. That's just because the, the filming is, is too, um, is, is too narrow, but here you see how it's kind of crunching, right? It's crunching all the profiles. It's not that informative. We just get one big line. So what we need to do is we need to maybe look at it um, on a 50 cent scale. So I'm gonna add a two in front and it's gonna double the scale's depth. And look at it here. Now we see, hopefully you can see it here. It's a lot more information, right? We see the profiles better. That's what you gotta do in order to, um, to, to see the, uh, the market action better. So let me do another one here. Let's do, um, Let's do Apple. Oh. Wrong symbol. So here you have Apple, right? Um, you see how it's, it's, too, it's too big. You have to scroll up and down. So you want to make Apple smaller. This is the opposite of Microsoft. Where we want to make Microsoft um, uh, you know, uh, bigger, wider, more scale. We want less scale. So let's try this. Let's pass it 0, 5. So you're basically having, uh, cutting the scale in two. And now you can see everything in one pane, right? So we're going in $2 increments. And there you have Apple's price action. So it's very straightforward. A lot of room for, uh, to customize it to your needs, to go with daily data, with weekly data, or um, uh, passing a more, more, more complex um, information such as getting the, uh, the, 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 the point of control or looking at uh, volume. For example, you could add volume information. Some of the sophisticated packages out there will show both the price profile with the volume profile next to each other. So quite a, you know, quite a lot of things you can do with this and um, uh, in this way of looking at the market. So I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.